guys, what are we making today? How about another milk bar layer cake? One of those recipes from the brain of Christina Tozzi, chocolate malt cake. Chocolate malt. Malt is what? Malt is a grain. Malted barley, malt extract into Ovaltine, Ovaltine into our cake, but also 1952 casserole for dinner with a glass of Ovaltine, but that's not happening today because we're making our cake. Over here today is the chocolate malt cake. Over here. Now anytime I've made one of these layer cakes for milk bar, they take the entire day. You need to be prepared for that. Clear off your schedule. You're not going anywhere for a while. Get cozy in your kitchen. You're gonna be baking up a storm from dawn to dusk. Coming up right at the top of our list is the chocolate malt cake. Let's get that made first and then we'll start working our way down the list. 115 grams of room temperature butter, one cup and two tablespoons of sugar, quarter cup of tightly packed light brown sugar, three large eggs, half a cup of buttermilk, half a cup and three tablespoons of some neutral oil, one and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla, one and a quarter cup of cake flour, half a cup of cocoa powder, teaspoon and a half of baking powder, and a teaspoon and three quarters of salt. Oops. In a bowl, combine your sugars, room temperature butter. Now give it a mix like two to three minutes until it's creamed together. Add the eggs. Continue to mix for like another two to three minutes. Now on a low speed, stream in your buttermilk, vanilla, oil. Once all those liquid ingredients have been combined, you're gonna mix this for like six minutes until it's double in size, fluffy, pale looking. Yeah. on low speed. Now you wanna make sure that you get this right. You're combining liquids with a fatty mixture. They hate each other. They don't really combine well. So your job, your job is to make sure they do. And you do that by mixing until six minutes is done. Scraping down the sides of your bowl as well. In our cauldron, we're gonna add all the dry ingredients. Bibbidi, bobbidi, little bit of cake flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, salt. Mix this until it's just combined. Nothing dry will last. Grease up this here baking dish with some butter. Add your parchment paper, the cake batter. Make the cake as flat as possible in there. We're gonna get this into the oven pronto for 30 to 35 minutes. Slight bounce back on the edges and it should no longer be, ow, oh, should no longer be jiggly in the center. I think this is good. I'm not, this looks good to me. Doesn't it feel good to just continue crossing things off that list? We're moving on to the chocolate malt sauce. Part two, 60 grams of dark chocolate, half a cup of glucose syrup, half a cup of super heavy cream. This is 40%, quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of granulated sugar. Now the next ingredient is molasses. Molasses, which at the store, the jar was like, like yay big and it was expensive. It's not something you ordinarily find in Belgium. So it's got like a import fee on it. I I'm not buying it. I'm never gonna use it again. So I'm just gonna use a substitute. Uh, apparently honey does the job quite well. This is just a teaspoon. So I'll just use a teaspoon of this. It's gonna be fun. And lastly, Ovaltine. Now I've been trying to figure out like what malt actually is. How does it like taste? A malt taste can be described as having a combination of flavors. It tastes sweet and nutty, but also described as tasting similar to toast, caramel, coffee, I don't know. I think it just enhances the flavors of the chocolate. In a medium bowl, add your chocolate, one cup of Ovaltine, salt, oh. Totally, now you've totally gotta chop that chocolate up. What we're gonna do is combine all the ingredients into like a, a deep bottom, like a saucepan. Half a cup of glucose, 
something that I thought they banned this in the UK. Glucose syrup. Add your molasses or save some money and add some honey. Sticky. Sugar and heavy cream. So I'm just gonna quickly head over to the stove. I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Pour it onto the chocolate. Now we're just gonna let that sit there for a minute. Don't touch it. Now very, very slowly, I'm gonna start whisking. Very slowly. Just like a turtle's pace, really. And after 30 seconds, you're gonna increase your vigor. Yeah. After another 30 seconds, increase your vigor again. And every 30 seconds, I'm gonna increase that vigor until like four minutes. Now I'm looking for a mixture that is glossy and silky smooth. And my hand hurts. Mixing with my left. What is this? Um, some of this Ovaltine really just clumped up. That is just, I don't know what, oh crap. I think I got this into a good place. This looks glossy and silky smooth. Definitely going to the gym tonight with all this snacking. Part three, chocolate malt frosting. 348 grams of butter, three cups of powdered sugar, a couple tablespoons of salt, one third cup of cocoa powder, one third cup of Ovaltine, quarter cup plus two tablespoons of whole milk. Now that's gonna make around four cups of frosting. I feel like that's gonna be plenty. Uh, person to my left, give me a bowl. Thank you. Sugar, salt, cocoa powder, Ovaltine. I'm gonna be using my trusty hand mixer. Medium high speed for five to seven minutes. When you got it looking fluffy, stream in your milk. Stay. Scrape down the sides of your bowl. Super smooth, super glossy. Into an airtight container until you need to use it. Next up, malt crumbs. One third cup milk powder, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon and a teaspoon of cornstarch, four tablespoons of melted butter, another quarter cup of friggin' Ovaltine, two tablespoons of sugar, a little bit of salt, white chocolate. Then it says more Ovaltine and milk powder, but that looks like it's down the road. I'll worry about that later. <laughs> a bowl. Combine your milk powder, flour, Ovaltine, sugar, cornstarch, toss, add melted butter, stir until it comes together and forms clusters. So I'm just specifically making a couple of really big clusters. The rest will be little tiny guys. Onto some parchment paper on a baking sheet. I'm just gonna quickly bake this for like 20 minutes. Milk crumbs go in. Add three more tablespoons of Ovaltine and one tablespoon of milk powder. With your hands, mix it all together. White chocolate. Add the melted chocolate on top. Once you have these completely covered, you're gonna toss every five minutes until they have completely hardened. I just got back from an adventure, really. I walked quite a ways to go to a cooking supply store so I could pick up this, which is a kitchen blowtorch. I wanted to put on a show today. When I bought this, there was no butane in this canister. So I had to go to the hardware store to pick up that, uh, lighter fluid, butane. Filled this son of a bitch up and I spent the last hour trying to get this to work. And it just, so I went back to the hardware store and picked up a proper blowtorch I'm pretty excited. Love it when the 
Marshmallows all stick together like that in a very inconvenient way. So I have these marshmallows. Uh, they're all freaking sticky. So annoying. So I got some full marshmallows like this. And I got little small ones. The problem is they're all effing sticky. Waste of money, waste of time, waste of my patience. However, I gotta use these because finding marshmallows in Belgium is also a f***ing pain in the ass. What I'm going to do is char the living f***ing daylights out of these. Saving the easiest for last. This is the last step. It is a quarter cup of whole milk, two tablespoons of Ovaltine. May I introduce to you the Ovaltine soak. Now, if you've ever assembled a milk bar layer cake, then you get the idea of it, which is you're just topping layers on top of layers. It's actually quite easy. It may take a couple cakes to get the hang of it. I think I'm six or seven of these cakes in now, and it's just like, you can do it blindfolded. <laughs> The good thing about these cakes is they're very forgiving. If you make a mistake, you're not really gonna be able to tell because they're already kind of messy looking to begin with. So you can get away with quite a bit, which is perfect for me. Firstly, what you will need are strips of acetate. If you're not familiar with these, you can get these at any sort of art store. They come in the size of like a sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. I just cut it in half. Secondly, you're gonna need a cake ring. This is six inches in diameter. Now take your cake, remember your cake. You're gonna flip that bad boy upside down. Should come out like butter. Peel off your parchment paper. You're gonna cut out two perfectly shaped circles. One Mississippi. Move these aside. And the bottom layer is gonna be those scrap pieces of cake just combined the cake ring on your plate and line it with your acetate. Scrap pieces on the bottom first. Fill in all the holes with as many scraps as possible. Now with your fist, you're gonna just pat it down, make it all snug. Pour some of that milk soak on top of that bottom layer and I'm gonna soak the living daylights out of it. Now this fudge sauce has been sitting for a while, so it really has hardened the hell up. Um, just put it in the microwave for like 30 seconds. Much better. Take one third of the fudge and fudge it on top. Now sprinkle one third of those crumbs and one third of these marshmallows. These marshmallows are a bit of a mess. To be perfectly frank with you. Marshmallows get off my thing. I don't know how this was exactly supposed to go down. I have a feeling not like this. Oh shit. Now, if you're gonna use marshmallows, just make sure you do this right. Oh my God. Uh, the marshmallows are creating quite a scene down here. Now, one third of that frosting. My whole goal here is just to hide these marshmallows with this frosting. Pretend like it never happened. Now you just repeat everything you just did. Soak that layer cake. Your malt fudge, crumbs, not the marshmallows. The frosting on top of that. If you're not proud of those marshmallows, the frosting acts as a way to disguise your stupidity. Last piece of cake on top. Okay, to avoid any more crumbs coming off the top of the cake into the frosting, I'm just gonna put this into the fridge and this is gonna act as my crumb coat. And I'm just gonna make sure that this hardens up a bit and then I'll put the remaining frosting on top. It appears to have worked. So next up on the old docket is taking the remaining frosting and putting it on top of this crumb layer. Now this is working, this is working. That's as smooth as smooth can be. Look at the height on this bastard. That is a giant. We're looking at almost five inches tall from the disaster that is these marshmallows today. That's all that's remaining. And then I have my crumbs. Now typically I would take the leftover stuff and sprinkle it along the perimeter of the top of this cake. 
but these marshmallows aren't gonna fit the bill today, so I have to be, I can make this work, I can make this work. Take the crumbs and I'm just gonna decorate. Oh, maybe if I do this instead. Put these in the middle. Yes, these stay in the middle. It works, I guess. Next up, you're gonna get this into the freezer. It needs to firm up. It needs to hang out in there for like, she says 12 hours. She says 12 hours. Easy. These marshmallows suck. And I don't like the look of them on my cake. Now while I was waiting, I picked up some new marshmallows. What does the milk bar chocolate malt cake taste like? Chocolatey delicious. Chocolatey delicious. Okay, my friends, that's all I got today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for sticking around. I will see you guys soon.